Hello everyone, my name is Jeff and I'm a welder. I've been welding professionally for the last two years. I started a small business, metal fabrication and welding, in Connecticut called Dark Moon Metals. Metal working has been a passion of mine since as far back as I can remember. I grew up watching my father restore old cars, weld and create things in our garage. And when I was 14 years old, he put the torch in my hand and ever since then, I've been hooked. In fact, along with welding, there's one other passion that I've had for a great number of years. As you may have guessed by the title of the video, my other passion is scouting. I've been a scout for over 20 years. I was a life scout, I'm an ordeal member of the Order of the Arrow, and I'm wood badge trained. This video is being made for one of my wood badge tickets. I was very excited to find out that in March of 2013, the Welding Merit Badge had been introduced into scouting, merging two of the things I love very much. I wanted to make this video to discuss the different things that you may need to anticipate before becoming a Welding Merit Badge counselor. I hope it helps. Okay folks, I'm back in my comfortable work clothes and I'm just about ready to crack open the Welding Merit Badge book. Now, I'm not going to start with the requirements right away. The first thing I'm going to read is on page two and it's a note to the counselor. Uh, and I want you to think about this for a minute before you become a Welding Merit Badge instructor. It reads, The Welding Merit Badge must be taught by a qualified person who is highly experienced in welding and is knowledgeable about various types of welding processes. Specifically, oxyacetylene welding, shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, and flux core arc welding. Sounds kind of daunting if you're somebody who just picked up a machine at Home Depot or Lowe's and you might just be a hobbyist, you may never have gone to school for welding. Does this immediately eliminate you from becoming a welding merit badge instructor? I don't think so. Now I've gone to school for welding, I attended Lincoln Technical Institute, I was there for 14 months and I did a lot of different varieties of welding. Now I'm planning on teaching the welding merit badge right inside my garage. Um, Every time I see a picture of the Welding Merit Badge being taught and it's broadcast over Facebook via one of the scouting feeds, it's always in a trade school setting. You always have a large group of scouts. You have um, all the instructors kind of standing in the background. And even I have looked at those things and said, wow, you know, should I become a Merit Badge counselor? And here are the things that you need to consider and think about to determine whether or not you're comfortable with taking on the challenge of becoming an instructor for this merit badge. So by now you're asking yourself, do I have what it takes to be a welding merit badge counselor? Well, I'm gonna give you three points to think about. I'm not gonna make the decision for you. It's something you have to think about and make the decision on your own. But the first point, first and foremost, is safety. Do I have a safe working environment? Do I have an area that meets all of the requirements where I know that I can have the class and I can conduct it in a safe manner. Same line of thinking. Do I have enough personal protective equipment for everybody who's going to be in my welding area? Now, if you're not already an adult leader and you might be a welding professional who wants to teach this and pass along what they know because you're just that kind of a cool person, scouts BSA policy requires that there is too deep leadership at all times. There is no one-on-one -on -one contact with youth. So that means you have to have enough personal protective equipment for yourself, for the youth that you're training, and a second adult. That's minimum. So you're looking at two to three welding helmets. You're looking at gloves, leathers, whatever you might need depending on the welding process you're going to be offering. Number two. And this is really more of a self-assessment. Take the book, look at the requirements, and ask yourself, if I had to perform these tasks, could I do it in such a way where I could earn the Welding Merit Badge? Would I be proficient enough to actually earn this on my own? Maybe you don't know everything that you should know about how to deal with a situation involving first aid. What do you do if something gets into someone's eye, or if they get burned, or maybe they receive an electrical shock from one of the machines? Do you know enough about the American Welding Society? How to read material safety data sheets? Could you, if you have to, demonstrate how to do a fillet weld on a T-joint, lap joint, or a butt joint? 
These are all questions that you really want to go over and make sure you're confident with before you start teaching this badge. Now, if you are fuzzy on any one of these things or you don't know exactly what every requirement demands, what you can do is say, hey, I'm really interested in becoming an instructor for this. I love welding, I'm just getting into it, but maybe I don't know everything I should know. Contact your local district. Find out if there are any other welding merit badge counselors in the area and say, hey, the next time you're teaching a scout the welding merit badge, can I sit in? Can I be your second adult? This is what I'm interested in. This is what I'd like to do. Can you help me? I'm sure you'll find that there are quite a few people out there that will be more than willing to share what they know. Number three, how much do you really enjoy welding? And that may sound like an odd question, but I want you to consider something. The welding merit badge is brand new, and counselors are few and far between. Chances are it may stay that way. Not everybody is going to go out and buy a welder or an acetylene torch set. That being said, as more scouts take this merit badge class and interest begins to spread, you may find yourself called on quite often to teach this class. If you're like me, working in a small shop with uh, maybe two to three kids maximum for every time you run the class, you may find yourself running this class a lot. So that's something else that you want to ask yourself. Is this something you can do repetitively? Is this something you enjoy enough where you can do it five, six, seven times a year and still have the same level of enthusiasm the first time you present it? Now, that might be a hard question to answer right here and now, but it is something you need to think about. Either way, becoming a Welding Merit Badge instructor is an asset to the scouting program. From here on out, what I'm going to do is divide the requirements into two separate categories, workshop and classroom. So let's jump right in with the requirements that we're going to end up discussing with the scouts, the classroom requirements. Number one, do the following. A, explain to your counselor the hazards you are most likely to encounter while welding and explain what you should do to anticipate, help prevent, mitigate, or lessen these hazards. If you're wondering what these hazards might be or what they're looking for, take a look at the next requirement, number 1B. Show that you know first aid for and the prevention of injuries or illness that could occur while welding, including electrical shock, eye injuries, burns, fume inhalation, dizziness, skin irritation, and exposure to hazardous chemicals including filler metals and welding gases. So now that we've read requirement 1B, we know all of the hazards they're looking for us to discuss with the scout for requirement 1A. Take that list, go over them step by step. Uh, one of the first ones that comes to my mind, eye injuries. How can we help prevent or mitigate an eye injury? Very simple, wear your safety glasses. And that's pretty much the basic things that they're looking for to satisfy this requirement. Once they have discussed this and you're pretty satisfied they know what they're talking about and they have a good idea of what it takes to be safe inside of a welding shop environment, move on to requirement 1B. Um, for the first aid portion of this, I might ask a show of hands if I have a group of scouts um, if they've earned the first aid merit badge. If so, I would call on the scouts heavily who have the merit badge to um, go over the different injuries and how to sort through them and care for them properly. Requirement 2. Do the following. A. With your counselor, discuss general safety precautions and material safety data sheets related to welding. Explain the importance of the MSDS. Everything welding related in my shop has a brand name on it. Whether it's Harris, Lincoln Electric, Miller, ESOB, all of those manufacturers have MSDS sheets available on their websites. So if you have a particular product in your garage, if you're planning on doing stick welding, for example, and you get the model number of the electrode, you can print out the material safety data sheet for that electrode and go over it with your scouts. It's that simple. Describe the appropriate safety gear and clothing that must be worn when welding. Then present yourself properly dressed for welding in protective equipment, clothing, and footwear. 
So part B I might actually do in two different pieces. I might do the talk about all the protective welding gear as I'm putting it on. I'd have them identify the gloves, why we need to have them, um, the dark shirt or leather jacket, the welding helmet, my protective boots. Um, when they are actually ready to weld, I would have them put the gear on themselves and explain why they're putting it on, um, what it protects them from, and what specific purpose it serves. Then uh, go over them from head to toe and say, okay, you have a little exposed skin here or not, um, and, and do it that way because I think as they're getting ready to enter that environment, they're starting to think a little bit more about what was already discussed. And uh, of course, if you have a large group, it's going to be really helpful because you're not uh, spending a lot of time in a room, especially if you only have one set of protective equipment or two sets of protective equipment. So this will kind of help move things along, it'll keep the flow of the class, and I think it'll hold their, uh, their attention a lot more to actually do it as they're describing it. 2C. Explain and demonstrate the proper care and storage of welding equipment, tools, and protective clothing and footwear. Now to me this is a requirement that you would do kind of toward the end of the day after some of the welding has already taken place. Now um, tools and equipment, really that's going to depend where you are or what you have in your shop. Um, if somebody's done shielded metal arc welding or stick welding, um, you might not necessarily go over with them on how to shut down gas regulators because there was no shielding gas. Um, if they were doing stick welding and they have electrodes all over the place from the different beads and projects that they've run, you know, simply cleaning up and maintaining the work area um, could be part of what you do when you're closing down at the end of the day. Uh, protective gear like your helmets or your safety glasses, some of them have protective bags. Uh, you slide the helmet in, put them back in the cabinet. Um, it really, this requirement to me really depends on what you have specifically in your shop. and. Um, you need to ascertain what the best course of action is for this requirement um, based on the experience that you've given the scouts. Requirement number three. Now for me, being an experienced welder, I had a little bit of a hard time trying to figure out exactly what I was supposed to focus on. Um, requirement number three is not divided into A, B, or C, um, but it is two parts. The first one is explain the terms welding electrode, slag, and oxidation. And that's pretty straightforward. They're basic definitions for those four words. Uh, and all of that can be found in the Merit Badge book itself. Now, to me, this is a second part, but it's the same question. It comes as, describe the welding process, how heat is generated, what kind of filler metal is added, if any, and what protects the molten metal from the atmosphere. So, there are a lot of different welding processes, so which one should I focus on? If I focus on gas metal arc welding, well, the heat is generated by an electrical uh, source, it's an electrical transformer. Um, shielding gas protects the weld puddle from the atmosphere. Um, if I'm doing gas welding with oxyacetylene, the flame envelope protects the molten metal from the atmosphere and the heat's generated by an oxy fuel mixture in the torch body. So what I would do as a merit badge counselor and to try to um, keep things uh, as simple as possible, I would look at requirement number five. And requirement number 5A in particular, select two welding processes and make a list of the different components of the equipment required for each process. Discuss one advantage and one limitation for each process. Once you pick those two processes, you can then take and answer the second part from number three. What generates the heat for those processes? How is the molten weld puddle uh, protected? Because it relates to one another. Um, to me, uh, if I wrote this particular requirement, number three, I would have kind of narrowed it down and broken into different parts and covered oxy fuel welding versus electric arc welding and discussed the difference between the two. Um, but I guess, you know, they didn't want to drag this out and, and have it take forever, so um, it is what it is. But that's how I would handle requirement number three. I would choose which welding processes uh, they wanted to discuss and then focus on those welding processes. Requirement number four. Name the different mechanical and thermal cutting methods. Choose one method and describe how to use the process. 
discuss one advantage and one limitation of this process. There are a lot of ways out there mechanically to cut steel. You have power hacksaws, metal cutting band saws, chop saws with abrasive wheels. Uh, there are just so many different things that you can cover. Uh, I'd be curious to know what the scouts themselves know about cutting metal. Maybe they've seen videos on Discovery Channel or, or things of that nature. And it's always kind of cool to see what the scouts come up with before you offer any of your own thoughts or ideas because some of them, um, they know quite a bit about what's out there and it's, it's sometimes surprising. Uh, when it comes to the thermal cutting or plasma cutting, uh, <clears throat> I happen to have both oxyacetylene torch sets and a plasma cutter in my shop. Um, to me, they both have their pros and cons. They have limitations and advantages. And uh, a lot of the stuff that they talk about um, in this book doesn't really scratch the surface of what these different pieces of equipment can do. So this is where, as somebody who is proficient in welding and welding technologies, uh, you might share some of your experiences with them, some of the problems that you ran into in the past <clears throat> or maybe you know how having that equipment just kind of saved the day and uh, from there have that discussion with the scouts and then let them choose what they think is a pro and a con um, and that should satisfy the requirement okay guys I already touched base a little bit on requirement number 5a uh, select two welding processes make a list of the different welding components and the equipment required for each process Discuss one advantage and one limitation for each process. Uh, me having all the equipment in the shop, I like to spread things out and explain each one of the different processes. Just a rough, you know, maybe 60 second overview on each one and then get an idea of what the scouts are interested in and let them choose from there. Um, once that requirement is met, you can move on to requirement 5B. Choose one welding process. Set up the process you have chosen including gas regulators, work clamps, cables, filler materials, and equipment settings. Have your counselor inspect and approve the area for the welding process you have chosen. That requirement's pretty self-explanatory, and it's going to take us out to the shop.